we're going to do something a little different. Um, we are going to work on how you would design and prepare a script if you were going to give a clinic on something or a class, a block of instruction, whatever you want to call it. How do you do it? How do you set it up? I'm going to show you how to set it up. Okay. I have been asked by special request for this. Let's watch. Watch. There goes an AHM RS2. Okay, then let's watch again. There goes another one. They're moving at slow speed. Fortunately, as you can see, one has stalled. And even if you wanted to, you cannot move. In fact, he's drawn enough juice. To... Oops, I keep on knocking myself off the track here. Check that out again. One more time. Now that RS2 is nice. But what makes it nice? Why does it run so much better? This is the out of the box one. This is the one you, would, you could get with train sets way back when. This is one that I've rebuilt. Now, I'm not going to go through the purpose of this is not to show you how to do it, but how to Tell other people how you would do it. And if you added a little demonstration into that, you would have a nice clinic on how to do this. So the first step, the very first step, is this. To do anything, to do any clinic, any plan, the first thing you need, which I will write on the pad here, number one, you need... vision. You need a vision. I envision that this one could be just as nice as this one. That's my vision. The second step is describe your vision. Description. That's what you need to do. You need to have a vision, and then you need to be able to describe it. I am going to describe my vision here to have Z2 to work just as nice as each other. That I need to change this motor. And I need to put the same motor in this one that I got over here. That's my vision. That's my description. Is I want to remotor this so it's just as good as that. That's my description. Now, at first, sometimes you'll have a complex vision, and it'll be very hard to describe. You may have to refine your, your description. You may do your practice, or you may pre... Like, I built this already. So I know, in my vision, to make this one be like this one, very straightforward and easy to do. But when I started with the yellow one, when I, when I started that the first time, I didn't know exactly how to describe where I went with this. So I refined it a little bit over time, and ultimately I ended up with a nice directional headlight system. Um, I came up with a fictitious railroad name based on some abandoned Milwaukee road track. Um, did a little research 
saw some pictures of stuff I liked, put in the number boards. Um, I put some reflectors on it because I really like those. They, they gave it a great look. And so on. And I had to refine it. Now, for this time, I know exactly what I did. So my description will be very straightforward. But you may have to refine your description. So, now you got a, a vision, a description. And then number three, you can make a plan. That is the basic. That is the essential elements. If you just have these three things, then you are you're in really good shape. That's the simplest thing there is. Description. You just keep refining your description. The plan, the easiest plan to make is step by step. in reverse order. Plan, step by step, in reverse order. There. That's, that's how you do it. That's how you make a plan. You list the steps, you put them in reverse order. So, at the very top of your list, on your plan, the final thing, the final thing will be the what we call, especially on the internet, when you're looking for videos, the final reveal. That's where I show you. That's where I show you what I did, what the result of what was done. Prior to that, I need to reassemble. In order to get the final re reveal, I need to reassemble it. Before I can reassemble it, I need to... Let's think here. I need to hook up... I need to hook up... The drive shafts. I'm not going to go into all the way in, into painting and decorating and everything. I'm just going to, this is just um, how can we get it to run. Okay, before I can hook up the drive shafts, I need to install the, let's see, before drive shafts, I would put, I would put on the universal joints. Before I put on the universal joints, would I glue the motor in or would I put on the U-joints first? I would put the U-joints on first, then I would glue the motor, then I would hook it up. So, I'm going to glue in the motor. Yes, I use glue. I use... That's what I use to mount all my motors. Just the way it is. If you have a different method, that you do that in your class. So, I glue in the motor. Because I, I'm going to have to test it. A little bit maybe with a piece of tape wrapped around it and before I glue in the motor I need to put on the u-joints and before I put on the u-joints I need to put in hmm glue in the motor huh I need to do some wiring after I put on the u-joints after I glue in the motor, after I hook up, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna add in here. Connect wires. I'm gonna have to connect the wires. Okay. So then I do the U joints, get them on the motor, hook up the drive shafts, glue in the motor, hook up the drive shafts, connect the wires, and do a final reveal. Um, Okay, before I can do put on the U-joints, I need to basically I gotta pick a motor, then I gotta size the motor, then I gotta put on the U-joints. Okay, so 
size the motor. That's where you uh, measure the shafts and cut them off to the right length. Shaft length. Okay. Shaft length. All right, now. So I got to, then I got to pick a motor. After I pick the motor, I got to test the motor, don't I? We're not going to worry about that. I mean, we should test it. All right, we better put that in. Okay, we're going to test the motor. If the motor's good, then we pick it. Then we, um, we confirm it. Confirm the motor. Test it before that. I'm running out of ink here. Let's see what we got. Let's see if that does the trick. Okay, so I gotta test the motor. I gotta pick it. Select motor. That's it. That'll be our our uh, first step. Okay, now these are in reverse order, right? Now, there is our bones of what we need to do. I have a vision of replacing this motor. I have a description. Replace the motor. The vision and the description are now the same. That doesn't usually happen. Usually you get a vision of pictures in your head. For example, if you were going to paint a structure or something, you'd have to describe that. You wouldn't just say paint a structure. You'd have to describe something about it. And then you, you, during your practice, you probably refine your description. Then I need to plan. Okay. Working backwards from the final reveal, I have now have an order. All right, so now, how do you do, how do you design your clinic? These are my notes for me to design from. This three-step process right here is called design. That's what it's called. Actually, they, they lengthened the name considerably. Now it's called something like design methodology or something, but basically, this is design. Vision, description, plan. Vision, description, direction. Something like that. But here it is. Here's our, here's our simplest way of planning that we can do is just plan in reverse order. Okay. Now, I have a basic framework. I can make lists of tasks that have to be done. Some tasks are implied. That means in order for me to put U-joints on, I have to have some U-joints or I have to make them. In order for me to put drive shafts on, I have to have them or make them. So an implied task is you got to gather the parts together. Another implied task. In order for me to test this, I got to have track to test it on. All right, those things are, are basically they're given to you because they are an essential part of your class. All right, so let's just go into how do you do the class. Now. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. So, the structure of a clinic um, in its most basic form that I can give you, we're going to we're going to lay out a framework. When you get really good at giving clinics, especially ones you give over and over, you're going to be able to rearrange it in a much more clever way. That's the art part of doing clinics. When you get really good at it, you rearrange the stuff all around. And, and then you end up with something really cool. But if it's like your first time, the first time doing it, here's a straight up method of how you do it. And once you have experience with your clinic, you do it again, you're going to refine it. So the first thing you need, number one, you need a motivator. You must have the interest of your audience right off the bat. You want to try to capture it. 
So what I did was I showed you these two and how the original doesn't run as good as as the one I rebuilt. Now if you actually want to see it, I did it. There is a series on, on my channel here of me actually rebuilding this. So you can see how all that was done. But just for the purpose of this, I showed these two side by side. And that was kind of my motivator for you to get interested in this. Now, if I did this as an actual class, I'd probably stage something. You know, I'd stage some showing, try to switch in a yard. I don't know. Every time I do it, I'd, I'd probably make something different. Okay, but I got to get your attention, so I need a motivator. Now, here's part of the art. You need an introduction where you say who you are and what you're going to do. All right, that's in your introduction to the audience. You know, you may know some people in there. You may not know some people. However, however that is, you introduce yourself. Tell them what your name is. Tell them what you're going to talk about. You can do the motivator before or after, depending on you know how you you rearrange this is your art. A tried and true method is motivator first, introduction second. They're signed up for the clinic. They already have some idea of what it is. So you hit them with the motivator right off the bat, then you introduce yourself. All right, now, once you've told them what you're going to tell them, we're going to, we take our plan back here. Our plan we got right here. We take our plan. Okay. We take the final reveal in your class will be called the terminal learning objective yes or t l o the t l o the terminal learning objective you can call it something else when you when you build yours but this is it the terminal learning objective in in this thing is how to properly hook up and make this motor work, right? So our TLO is essentially leads to, we'll just put in brackets here, our final reveal. Our final reveal is our TLO for this thing. Some Sometimes some clinics are really complicated and, and you can't finish. You are meant to start a project that you take with you and then you have the skills to do it yourself later so you may not have a final reveal that's not a problem this is just bare bones basic stuff the TLO is the final reveal and you tell them up front what it is okay you've given them the title remoter uh, AHM RS2 the final reveal is we want our locomotive to be running good enough to say our standard will be um, switch a switch a yard without without failing that that's that'll be our standard okay so then we have this list each item on that list is called enabling you guessed it learning can you guess what happens next objective enabling learning objective is and now we start from the bottom and work our way up to final reveal so we've got we're gonna have in this case one two three four five six seven eight Enabling learning objectives. And that leads to the TLO, the final reveal. So we give our class one enabling learning objective at a time. Now here's the other thing. Between enabling learning objectives, also called ELOs, they are the steps from the plan.
Okay, let's test from the plant. If you're going to take a break, do it at the at the transition from one ELO to another. So let's say you're doing a really complicated class and it's going to be like five hours long. When you reach an ELO, that's a perfect time to say, all right, everybody, take a break. Stretch your legs, get a drink of water, whatever you got to do, and, and come back in 10 minutes, however long you want your breaks to be. That's a good, good time to do that. All right, so you do all of your enabling learning objectives, and then you should get to the final. Now, this is Army class is where you get to the exam. You take the exam. In a clinic, you get to the end where you actually perform the final reveal. You perform the TLO. That's it. Then you're done. The neat thing about having enabling learning objectives in order is that it gives you natural places to have discussion and conversation. Those kinds of things are up to you as art. Like perhaps we don't want you. There are some things in here that don't have to be done in order. Okay, there's a few things you do, would not have to do in order, like the U joints and the drive shafts. You could do those first, and get them ready. Like I, I 3D print mine, so I 3D print a batch of them, then I size those. Or you could go through a bunch of motor selections and testing them. Um, basically, you. In testing the motor for these locomotives, what I'm doing is I'm testing to see will the motor fit inside the shell? Which way do I need to wire it to get the revolutions to make the locomotive run in the proper direction? Because I did find, since I wanted this to be long hood forward, um, I flipped over my motor to make sure that it would uh, it would go the right the way I want it, so I could have this be the front. You could do those things in different orders. That's all there is to it. Okay? So, let's see, what, what did we have here? So, you have a vision, a description, and a plan. A plan in reverse order, step by step. You take that, you design something to motivate people. You have to have an introduction. Who you are and what you are, what your clinic is about. And this is the place also you do things like the bathrooms are located somewhere. There's a drinking fountain. There's a, you may not have open containers of, of drink on the table things like that things you need to know uh, there will be a lunch break there will be breaks in between put all that stuff in your introduction all your administrative business in your introduction then you tell them what the what the terminal learning objective the TLO what the final reveal should be and here's a little thing in the motivator sometimes the motivator is a final reveal but they don't know that yet. Or it's a different version of Final Reveal. You got to use your own art on that. That's it. And then putting things in order. Okay, then you can, if you want to, list all the enabling learning objectives, all the LOs, all the steps in the plan up front. They don't have to be a surprise. And in fact, for NMRA clinics, you need to have a handout. Which should, ha which should list the final reveal, the TLO, and all of the yellows, all the enabling learning objectives, the steps from the plan. And, and you should be giving that to anyone in your, to your students in your clinic. And then that's it. When you're done, final reveal, and then, hey, then it is social hour, and you're done. 
and we're at 25 minutes. I spent 25 minutes showing you how to do this. Hopefully, you now know this is not, it's not rocket science. I personally like to keep lab books. These things. I keep visions and stuff. My visions I put in this book. So if I ever want to give a clinic, I've got books of stuff that I might want to use for clinics. Whenever I have an idea, I put it in the lab book. That way I don't forget it. There it is. There you have it. If you want to see how this was done, uh, I did a final reveal on it earlier today. So it should be one of the videos just previous to this one. And that's it. That's how you do it.